All right, this is One Last Midnight, and welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. Today, we're going to be looking at the chemistry lab and how to automate that process to make some sort of specific resource. Now, I'm going to look at it generically. I'm not going to make a build for each specific resource, unless, of course, you would like to see that. But I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can go about automating the process of using the chemistry lab. Now, I will be doing a specific build on the nanocarbon mainly because it's huge and you know people really want to see it and you know regardless of all these builds that i do there's many different ways that you could set these up but if you guys would like to see specifically uh production lines on anything that comes out of the chemistry lab let me know in the comments below and i will make a video on it but hope you guys enjoy this for the automated chemistry lab, you're going to need a bunch of things. Now, there's several things that are free that you can automatically use, which we are going to be using, which is the canister, medium platform A, large platform A, medium storage. And then you're going to need a bunch of other things. And if you just take these items, the soil centrifuge, the auto arm, the button repeater canister, large platform and atmospheric condenser as kind of a general guide, then it's going to roughly cost you about 7,500 bytes to make all this stuff. So we're going to look at different scenarios and scenario one is just a basic setup. In the automation update, there was a change that was made to the chemistry lab. Also a bunch of other different base building pieces that allows it to be able to continue to keep producing whatever item it's going to make as long as the resources are available. So in this very, very basic setup, I have a large platform B. I have a couple medium resource canisters. These can also be medium storages filled with specific items. This one is filled with resin and this one is filled with organic and I've got some power. Now the chemistry lab happens to use three units per second and each one of the salt medium solars are producing two units per second. So I have a total of four going into the medium platform B. And of course it's not going to use it all, but I need an additional one to run the auto arm. Now for all of our examples, we need to run the chemistry lab. So we're gonna look at rubber as the resource that we wanna make. It's just an example and it allow us to be able to look at a couple different scenarios on how you can configure the chemistry lab for automation. So in this basic example, I have an auto arm. It has a rubber already placed on the auto arm to filter because that is the only thing I want the auto arm to take off of the chemistry lab. I have an empty resource canister, which is going to be the output area for the auto arm. Again, I have my power and I have the chemistry lab. So when I enable the output for the resource canisters, they're already automatically going to feed the chemistry lab. And the moment I turn the chemistry lab on, it's going to start producing rubber. When the item is complete, the auto arm We'll grab the rubber and put it in a storage canister and the chemistry lab will continue to make another item. And it will continue to do this process as long as there are resources in the medium canisters. This is a very, very basic automation for the chemistry lab. If you don't have the resource canisters, you could still use medium storage and you could start this process pretty early in the game. To turn off this process, just shut off the chemistry lab. It will finish producing the item it's currently making and then it will stop. A slightly different configuration, but pretty much the same concept as the first idea is to have your storage offset to somewhere else, some other location. And this is great if you're delivering your resources via some sort of vehicle, or you just want to be more organized and have all of your resources in a specific location. We have two auto arms in this case. One is set to filter resin and the other is set to filter organic, which is going to pull from these medium resource canisters and then place on the chemistry lab. Let's enable the output for these medium resource canisters. And once I start turning on the chemistry lab to produce rubber, it will start the process and 
deliver the final result into this medium resource canister. So this configuration is very similar to the first configuration. The only thing that we have done is offset the storage. Again, that is useful, especially if you have some sort of distribution area in which you're pulling these resources from. Scenario number two, full automation. In this scenario, we have created a system which can maintain itself as long as there is soil. Now the two items that are needed to create rubber are organic and resin, which can also be produced on the soil centrifuge. So in this scenario, we have an automated soil centrifuge that will produce organic. And on the other side over here, we have an automated soil centrifuge that will produce resin. We have arms on each side that have a filter of its specific resource. And it's set to deliver to the chemistry lab, which will then produce the rubber and feed it into this medium resource canister. This auto arm is set up to filter rubber so that we only get rubber from the chemistry lab. Now, this setup is going to take significantly more power. We have to feed two soil centrifuges, several arms and the chemistry lab. So you're going to need to have enough power to be able to operate a system like this. In order to run the soil centrifuges automatically, we have to set up a medium resource canister storage timer. I already have a video on timers. You can watch the video if you need a refresher, but ultimately this storage sensor is set to empty or not empty and the resource canister when triggered will load the resource on the top and distribute it on the bottom as the sensor gets triggered causing it to send a signal to the soil centrifuge to run. So let's turn all this on. We're going to turn on the auto arms to be able to deliver soil to the soil centrifuge. We're going to set the soil centrifuge up to create organic. And we're going to turn on our medium resource canister timer. Once the resources are complete, this auto arm will pick it up and start delivering it into not only the chemistry lab, but also the storage. Let's turn this auto arm on, this auto arm on, and let's get this process started on this side to start producing resin. As resin is delivered into the chemistry lab, we can now start turning on the chemistry lab to make rubber. And finally, the rubber will be delivered to the medium resource canister. So in this scenario, as long as we have soil in medium resource canisters, we can produce an endless supply of rubber. Why would you want to? I don't know, but this should give you some ideas on how to build fully automated chemistry labs and their setups for each specific resource. Again, we use rubber as an example. Now, what if I want to make a change to this system and have my chemistry lab start producing plastic? Well, from our existing scenario, we would just have to change a few things. The organic side would remain the same. But over on the resin side, we'd actually have to change the soil centrifuge to start producing compound. We'd have to flip the arm, the filter by compound. We'd have to change the chemistry lab to produce plastic. We'd have to flip this arm to filter by plastic. And we'd have to make a slight modification and add a couple pieces to the base because plastic takes carbon. So while the organic is getting produced just fine, we would have to move this auto arm around and actually place a smelter down to smelt the organic into carbon. And we'd have to put another auto arm down that is going to take the carbon from the smelter and put it onto the chemistry lab. We also want to filter by carbon. Finally, we're going to put an empty medium resource canister here to collect the plastic that we're going to be producing. And so if we turn this on and change the chemistry lab to start producing plastic, what will happen is when organic is complete, the smelter will smelt it into carbon. The auto arm will pick up the finished carbon, drop it off at the chemistry lab. The compound that is now coming in from the other side will be used to then produce plastic. And it'll be stored in the medium resource canister. So you can see with a couple easy tweaks, 
to an already existing system, we are now producing another resource. But what if I wanted to produce, let's say, aluminum alloy? Well, your setup is going to be just slightly different. You're going to have your raw resources in some storage somewhere with some arms that are pulling to the furnaces, which will then produce the refined resources where you have some arms that are putting it on the chemistry lab and finally an arm that stores it into the medium resource canister. And so this is how you can set up the chemistry lab for another automated process. Again, you don't have to set them up this way. There are tons of different ways to set them up. The purpose of this video was to give you an idea on how you could automate the chemistry lab. All right, so that was my guide on the automated chemistry lab. Once again, if you want to see a specific build, from the chemistry lab, just let me know in the, in the comments below and I'll make a video for it. But anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did hit that like button, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.